things in a year ago, just a year ago in October, he was ordained as a ordained reverend and is now the, uh, the pastor of the ministry as well as director of ministries for the source. It's been my privilege to get to know George and to work with him on several occasions to experience his passion for God and his love for the people that he serves. And uh, please give George your full attention as he comes up tonight and shares with you for a few minutes about the ministry that he does through the source. Help me welcome George Lynch. Before I start, I have a bit of a confession to make. I, uh, tonight is Friday at the source, and on Fridays we have uh, Friday night fried chicken. And I told myself that I wasn't going to partake of Friday night fried chicken, but I did. Miss Joyce, I had a piece of fried chicken, and it was good. Tonight I, I want to share with you an ancient Hebrew tradition called sitting shiva. Shiva, meaning seven, is a grief and mourning process for the bereaved. Those who are at a loss take on a halakhic status of ovel, or to be a mourner. Traditionally, the mourners tear their outer garments and wear these torn garments throughout the Shiva. The funeral day is the first day of Shiva. This is the day where a meal of comfort supplied by neighbors and friends called Sukhudat Habraha is, is shared. Shiva is a communal event. That means that the members of the community come to the mourner in their pain and grief to let them know that they are not alone. On the seventh day, the mourner walks around the community with those sitting Shiva with him to symbolize that the mourner is ready to transition from mourning and back into the community. During the seven day period, many customs and rules are in place. Things such as it is customary for mourners to sit on low chairs or even on the floor. This is symbolic of being brought low by their grief. Many communities make arrangements where the Jewish burial society, known as the Havetta Kedisha, or the Friends of Holiness, will make meals and serve refreshments to mourners and to visitors. It is considered a great mitzvah, or good deed of kindness and compassion, to sit shiva with mourners. Traditionally, while sitting shiva, no greetings are offered. Visitors wait for the mourners to, to initiate conversation with them. If a mourner wants to talk, then the visitors talk. If a mourner wants to remain silent, the visitors remain silent. And if the mourner wants to cry, the visitors cry with them. Many who sit Shiva offer, uh, often offer the traditional words of consolation. Many, may the omnipresent comfort you among the other mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Once engaged in conversation by the mourners, the visitors, uh, it is appropriate for the visitors to talk about the deceased, sharing the stories of his or her life. Many mourners use Shiva as a distraction from their loss or to openly share their grief with family and friends. So I ask you, what does sitting Shiva have to do with the source? The source, on a daily basis, sits with the bereaved and mourns their loss. Maybe their loss was a person. Maybe their loss was a place. Maybe their loss was a job. But it's loss all the same. At the source, we may sit Shiva for seven days. We may sit Shiva for seven weeks. We may even sit Shiva for seven years to let someone know that they are not alone in which time we are supplying meals of comfort and a fellowship of kindness. We are willing to walk through someone's funeral process as long as it takes letting them know that we are there for them. We see them through to their seventh day of Shiva where they can begin to get ready to enter community again. I want to share one experience of sitting Shiva with you that is very dear to my heart. Michael came to our doors, a chronically homeless and suffering alcoholic. 
We worked with Michael trying to find the key to what ailed him for three years. He would have limited success at sobriety for a couple of weeks at best, only to find himself at the bottom of the barrel and into the bottle again. One night during a cold night shelter, Michael showed up on our doorstep, drunk and in tears. Trying to console, I simply sat and listened to him. After three years, Michael was ready to let me into the deepest hurt and loss in his life. He began to share with me about his fiance. They had been together for four years and were talking about marriage. Yet on this specific date, many years ago in his life, he found her dead on the bathroom floor due to suicide. With nothing left to hold on to, his reaction was to leave and never look back. Michael became homeless. Not knowing how to mourn, Michael turned to the streets and alcohol to cope with his pain. After three years of sitting Shiva in silence, Michael was ready to talk, and we were there for him. A plan of recovery was set out, and now Michael is doing well. He is currently attending a trade school in South Florida and becoming a computer technician. Michael's story is only one of many where the source refuses to allow anyone to suffer loss alone. Anyone who has experienced loss of any kind, minor to major, deserves someone to be there for them in their time of need. This is what we are called to in the greatest commandment. Listen to the words of Jesus and let them resonate within your heart. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment, and the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophet. Because of your direct support of the source, these two commandments are being fulfilled in the lives of the homeless and poverty-stricken in our community. Where the source refuses to leave anyone behind, as the pastor, I ask you to refuse the status quo of giving tonight and help us to reach our goal. Not everyone can sit shiva with the broken, the hurting, and the hungry. But we have all suffered loss of some sort. And with your support, you can enable a very capable staff of being the arms, the feet,